Welcome, everyone. This is the Monday edition, January 24th, 2022 of the NBA Triple Double Show, powered by the Predictive Playbook and presented by Sports Memo TV. I am your host, John Ryan, and I have my co-host and NBA partner and good friend and professional sports betting, Ronald Cabang, with me. And we're going to go over a trio, which is the triple part of this show. Obviously, the double is us, Ronald and myself, and we're going to get started right now. With the first game, looking at the Cavs versus the Knicks. This is, uh, Knicks have been playing quite a few games at home recently, but this one is on the road. And they are at the Rocket <clears throat> Mortgage Fieldhouse. Tip is set for 7 o'clock against the Cleveland Cavaliers, who find themselves fifth place in the Eastern Conference. The Knicks are 11th in the Eastern <clears throat> Conference with a 23 and 24 record. Cleveland's been playing great. 28 and 19 on the season, 29 16 with two pushes against the number. And they are 13 and 9 at home and 17 and 4 straight up <clears throat> as a favorite. And that is exactly what Cleveland is. They are favored by six Ronald with a total of 202 points, which is one of the lowest totals of the season in the NBA sure. Association. <clears throat> so, where yeah. do you see the betting opportunity in this matchup? Yeah, like you mentioned, the Cavs are, are, are a strong team this season. They're one of the top teams in the East. And even though, um, you know, this total is super low, I'm looking at the under here. The, the Knicks, like you mentioned, they're playing the second game in back-to-back -back nights, <clears throat> going from home to road. And this is they're going to be their first game of a, a tough three-game road trip coming up. They got the Cavs today, then the Heat, and then the Bucks uh, up next. Um, but they're they're really not in position to, to look ahead at this point. Uh but I know Rose is out, Kemba and, and Robinson are game time decisions. Uh, Noel did come back last game, so and he played well. So I think that that's going to help a bit if if Robinson ends up not playing. <clears throat> a couple of trends to look at here. Knicks are 7-2 to the under when the total is under 208. And some of those totals did get down to like 202, 202 and a half. So this is not like unfamiliar territory for them. <clears throat> They're also 4-1 to the under on the road with no rest. And four and one to the under on the road against teams with a winning record, which the Cavs are. <clears throat> the Cavs, um, they're coming into one to this one a little bit more rested, uh, but they will be without Markinen and and Rondo is a game time decision. <clears throat> this, I, I, ultimately, I think this is a look ahead spot for them. Uh, they have they they have become one of the top teams in the East, and and I think they they could possibly be saving themselves for their upcoming matchup against the Bucks. <clears throat> Uh, some trends to to think about here are the Cavs are four zero and one to the under at home against teams with no rest, um, and seven and three to the under at home against teams with a losing record, and then uh, another one is a six and zero to the under when the total is two hundred six or less. So, like I mentioned, these low totals are not you know unfamiliar for both of these teams. Um, in the last ten games, uh, there's there's only a one point four point difference in net rating between the two teams here. And uh, so that and that's the only reason why I lean the Knicks here is, is the look ahead spot <clears throat> and the fact that, you know, ultimately they're, they're not playing that much worse than the Cavs are, when, especially when it comes to net rating. Um, I know the Cavs are more rested, uh, but uh, the look ahead spot here is strong, in my opinion. I really do like the under here, though. Um, I think it's possible neither team hits 100 points. So I, I'll be taking the under in this one. <clears throat> And I'm going to join you on that, Ronald, because <clears throat> I have two angles to add. The uh, Knicks are 21 and 10 under facing a, an opponent that's pretty good uh, shooting team in road games. They make 46% or more of their shots in games played the last two seasons. They've gone 21 and 10 to the under. Cleveland is 22 and 10 to the <clears throat> under when playing against a team with uh, just a modestly losing record <clears throat> like the Knicks have, a uh, win percentage between 40 and 49% in games. <clears throat> Uh, played over the last three seasons. So two uh, pretty good trends there that add up to 43 and 20 <laughs> and one on each of the teams involved. So I, I do like the under here. I think you're absolutely right. I think first team to 95 <clears throat> is probably going to win this game straight up. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's move on. To, so uh, Chicago is 28 and 17 and they've lost uh, more than they've won. That is certainly the case right now. They are uh losers of six of the last seven they're three and four against the number during that span the over under has gone two four and one push but oklahoma city's you know just a losing machine uh straight up at least they've lost five straight ten of their last 11 but they are two and two with one push against the number and a surprising seven and three against the spread over the last ten 
Um, I like the Bulls in this in this game, though. I think they are going to uh, you know, start writing the ship. I think the market's overreacted. This is also a, a new game on the schedule. The previous game that was scheduled was canceled due to uh, COVID-19 health and safety protocol issues. Um, and supporting the Bulls, Ronald, is uh, the Bulls are 34 and 15 against the number one facing an opponent with a losing record spanning the games played over the last two seasons. And a little betting system here that's gone 21 and 5 against the number for 81% winning bets spanning the last five seasons. Bet on road favorites coming off two or more under result games. Has a scoring differential between minus three and plus three points per game and facing a struggling offensive team and defensive team, just a struggling team, period, that is getting outscored by seven or more points per game. Just those simple parameters has added up to a 21 and five ATS record for 81% winning bets. So I am taking the Chicago Bulls in this matchup, Ronald. You see anything uh, in this matchup? <clears throat> Yeah, I was looking at the the under here. It's a lean for me, not an official play or anything like that. But the 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 Bulls they struggle on uh, games with no rest. Uh, they're they're you know especially defensively, um, they allow 112 points per game in in, in uh, nine games this season when they haven't when they're playing with no rest. But <clears throat> like you mentioned, the Thunder they, they are terrible offensively, <clears throat> and they're nine and one to the under uh, when they're more rested than their opponents. Um, this season, uh, I know they lost uh, ten out of their last eleven, like you mentioned, but they've covered eight of those, <clears throat> and that's the reason why I kind of like stayed away from the from the spread myself. Um, but uh, I, I just think that you know, offensively, both teams might struggle here. Um, I think Levine's status is is pretty important today. Uh, he's a game time decision. If he plays, you know, obviously the Bulls will will welcome that uh, <clears throat> addition because they're they're missing a lot of guys here. Um, and that's probably the reason why they've been struggling is a lot of the injuries that they've been kind of going through. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I would lean the under here. If, if Levine doesn't play, they're going to struggle offensively again, but they're, they're going to play some solid defense <clears throat> and, and the, the Thunder can't score. Uh, so, you, I mean, even though they've been covering so much this season, they've been a covering machine while losing all of their games. Um, you know, uh, they're just not able to put up points. So, to me, the, the lean would be the under in this one. All right, that's good stuff, Ronald. Let's uh, move on to our third and final game of the Triple Double Show. This is the Indiana Pacers, who are 13 games under 500, 13th in the Eastern Conference at 17-30 and 30 record. They're playing the 11th best team in the Western Conference. That would be the New Orleans Pelicans at the Smoothie King Center at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Pelicans are 17-28. and 28. 21 24 ATS over under is 18 and 26 with one push for the Pelicans. <clears throat> this line opened at minus three and still has the Pelicans installed as a three point home favorite. Indiana's <clears throat> um, been playing pretty not real well, but they've been playing better. Uh, yeah. They're coming off um, this is their fifth uh, game of a five game road trip. They <clears throat> beat the Lakers and the Warriors. Uh, but the Warriors, you have to put an asterisk uh, because it, it was sudden, like massive scratches right before the tip. Uh, so it's not like they beat the real Warriors team. They beat, you know, basically the bench. Uh, but nevertheless, it is a win. The total here is 215 <clears throat> points. I'm kind of uh, thinking the under in this matchup, Ronald. Where, where are you going with this one? I'm looking at the uh, the Pelicans here. The the Pacers are playing their fifth straight game on the road, and, and they're still going to be shorthanded. McConnell, Brogdon, Turner, and Sabonis are out. Uh, Levert is a game time decision, and like you mentioned, they they've been a surprise lately. They beat the Lakers outright. They beat the Warriors outright, and they covered against the spread in the last game. Um, but I, I think that the Pelicans at this point uh, they can't afford to look over a team like this. Um, so I think that that's the reason why the Pelicans will probably try a lot harder than the Warriors did, uh, or the or the Lakers or or the Suns, <clears throat> to be honest. Um, but they some trends here: the Pacers are two and five against the spread, and five one and one to the under on the road against teams with a losing record. So that kind of goes with your under there, <clears throat> against um, uh, oh and five against the spread when their opponent has two days of rest or more, and then four and one to the under on the road when they're less rested than their opponent. <clears throat> so 
you know, against the spread, you're, we're fading the Pacers. Uh, and, and like you mentioned, the under is a solid play here. <clears throat> On the Pelican side, this is going to be their first uh, of ha- uh, first half of back-to-back games. Uh, but they're going to be without Ingram and Zion, of course, and, and Graham's going to be a game-time decision. I think he's going to be important. <clears throat> but whether or not he plays, um, you know, I, I just think that the, the, the Pacers are due for like a, a letdown spot here. <clears throat> the the Pelicans they're they're well rested too. They haven't played since Thursday. <clears throat> they're seven four against the spread and seven four to the under when they're more rested than their opponent. Five and one against the spread and five and one to the under as home favorites and they're short favorites today. Um, you know I I think a lot of the signs are here uh, are leaning to to the Pelicans and the under like you mentioned. <clears throat> I do trust for some reason. Uh, the spread more than than the under just because of the pace that the Pacers have been playing with the with these bench players. Um, I just think that the Pelicans, even without Ingram, can take this one on the short line. And I like it uh, uh, quite a <clears throat> bit. Um, Ronald, Indiana is also 8-0 and to the under in road games after having won two of their last three games this season. They are also 10-2 and under in road games after a game in which they did not cover the spread. And there ain't no in row games after successfully covering the spread in two or more consecutive games this season. So I think those trends continue and add another notch to the win column uh, for those respective angles. Yeah. So that'll that's our breakdown of three games. Ronald. I believe our best bets here, uh, I'm not speaking for you, but I think in summary, we're going under in the Indiana game against the Pelicans. We're playing under in the Cavaliers-Knicks, and we're playing the side with the Chicago Bulls in their matchup at OKC. Is that, uh, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, that sounds good. That does sound <laughs> good to me. I, I do have a strong lean on the Pelicans as well on the side. Um, but yeah, let's stick with the three, three, three that you mentioned. All right, that sounds good to me. We're going to look to improve on our Record, which is hitting 69% winners on a 44-20 with one push record. That's spanning 21 shows, guys and gals. It's uh, It's been a remarkable run for us, and we're going to look to continue to just keep doing it one day at a time, one show at a time, one pick at a time, one win at a time. So that'll do it for the Monday edition of the Triple Double Show. I thank you, Ronald, for your time, and thanks to everyone for taking the time to view this video show, take a moment, just take an extra moment, hit the subscribe button. Our subscriber growth is really going up fast and it's uh, you know for good reason. I do humbly say that we provide some awesome content and it, the word's getting out. So take a moment, subscribe, nail the bell. You'll get notified of every single show we do in every single sport. And we'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, the next edition of the NBA Triple Double. And until then, remember... Always bet with your head and not over it, and may all the wins be yours.